Let's consider all that you've heard on this program today with our down the middle analyst who is with me for the rest of the show. And she is the journalist, political commentator, and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Eco. How nice to see you. Your your fans have missed you on <laughs> oh the program. Oh my God, okay, okay, that's <laughs> But cool. I told them you were gallivanting all over the place, that so you didn't really? actually, oh you, my you, were, God. you were doing things that were equally important. So okay, that's that good. Thanks for defending me. <laughs> well, let's start with uh, Yunusa Tanko, the Labour Party person. Um, some on clarity, if you like, about what exactly the position is. I mean, we had the the uh, former president of the um, uh, Bar Association weighing in there, Dr. Lisa Abakoba, suggesting that there is an abide principle, right. which is the right of the courts to apply. Well, what are your thoughts on all that? Well, to the layman, it seems unclear mm. and confusing. And, um, you know, I'm glad that uh, Mr. Lisa Abakoba's son um, intervened and sent that test message. Um, at the same time, it seems that the Labour Party um, has a rational position in questioning mm. um, the court regarding the CTC. If uh, the, the PDP has received theirs, so they should receive theirs as well. Um, at the same time, it looks like it's an issue of procedure, from what Abakaba said, issue of procedure, processes, maybe some efficiency, mm. inefficiency, communication and rights of citizens to know and the rights of the party you know if there's a judgment the party has the right to know they said they, it was not communicated to them mm. so i think um the, the court doesn't need all of this it seems un untidy uh if it's untidy it lends credence to the general view well absolutely that i, the, I agree that, with that, that the judiciary is morally challenged mm. and it's crippled by a set of pressures that whittled down its independence and it's doing the bidding of one or two you know I mean, People, it, to be you know. to be fair, it, it's. I mean, I, I may not go that far in in sort of interpreting it, but but certainly there is something that it, it raises questions when you release the CTC of the PDP and you don't release that of the of the Labour Party. It kind of raises all kinds of questions, doesn't it? Well, what happens now is they have the choice to go back to the Supreme Court mm. and apply or, you know, seek to get some clarification about what is happening. I think there they can then sort it well, out. Well, they said they've written twice to, well, the, to the Labour Party well, within back. the last month. Well, they have, to go, they have to go back to the Supreme Court. Then the Supreme Court owes it to the party and to Nigerians to mm. communicate and explain what exactly is happening. If not, you know, the narrative that, you know, they're not independent and they're not for Nigerians, you know, it just uh, digs mm. in. And, and there was, um, of course, moving on from there, Jesse Tega Onopata of the APC. I mean, I'd love to have him sitting side by side with, with <laughs> Dino Melaye. It would be an interesting one to see, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, I mean, Dino Melaye's call for a boycott um, a boycott is a civil action that is used as a tool in, you know, civilized mm. and democratic societies for good cause, you know, for people who, you know, perceive injustices and, uh, uh, you know, discontent and dissatisfied with the political system. However, I, I think that the critics of Dino Melaye would uh, assert or say that he lacks the political credential to move this kind of idea because he's given to rabble rousing. And so he might not be able to pull it off. Um, at the same time, some might say, oh, you know, the messenger doesn't matter. It is the message that is the bigger issue. Mm. Uh, do we need to boycott a system that looks like it doesn't <coughs> work in the interest of people? And then how do you do that? The problem then is that not everybody agrees, you know, uh, individually you cannot do it but collectively you're able to pull off that kind of um, mm. civil but action I mean, do you disagree or agree with the apc when they say that they think the opposition are trying to impugn the credibility of the judiciary well it's it's not that straightforward i think a lot of nigerians apart from the party this is not a party issue mm. yes the parties disagree with the judiciary but when you listen to Nigerians generally, as a whole, I think there is that feeling that the judiciary, its independence and power is sleeping. I mean, when you look at you know, the, the current political situation and try to analyze it, you know, you look at the political class, you know, the ruling elite, for instance, mm. 
you, you analyze their behavior. It can be likened to Tasmanian devils. Would, it seems like the re their reason death is to cause confusion, to cause chaos, and to cause destruction. And they're not thinking about order, sanity, progress, and how you improve you know, general conditions and the country. So I think it, it's not an issue of party. Nigerians as a whole, mm. I think, to a large extent. But I mean, extent, it, it's not happening that frequently. I mean, if you look at sort of the weight of the, num the cases that they have to deal with and almost the primitive circumstances under which they have to deliver those cases. I mean, issues of electricity, for example, in the court system, whether the air conditioning is working, whether they have to handwrite a lot of their stuff and so on. I mean, those are fairly, you know, demanding conditions. And in those circumstances, you could certainly make, you know, er clerical errors, couldn't you? I mean, yeah, the, these are valid reasons mm. that are being raised, not only by you, but other people as well. We know that the judiciary has serious challenges, but you have to talk about it and then to address it. Of mm. course, there is the issue of executive intimidation, executive pressure, insufficient infrastructure, um, inadequate funding. So all of this combined to affect you know the judgments you know the delays in re resolution of cases the questionable judgments and even limited justice in so many um, areas especially the local mm. areas so these are real problems and if you don't speak about them nothing will be done about them so the point is that it is a public discourse and nigerians should learn to have public discourse it doesn't mean that you're the enemy the political parties are not the enemy of one another we are not the enemy of government these are issues that we talk about as citizens of, of the country in the hope that we can clean them out right. so that we can have a better society. That's a very important point, and thank you very much indeed for making it. Uh, Dr. Welcome. Constance Ikoku is, of course, a journalist and uh, a Rise News analyst, and uh, she is... Uh, was talking to me there i was <laughs> <laughs> on this auspicious occasion that's it for this edition of arise prime time join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja and kaduna bye-bye and thank you for watching